Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I want to talk about molding planes. I've had this question come to me for oh, as long as I've had the channel now. How exactly do you go about sharpening something that looks like that? This is kind of interesting and the reason it keeps coming up is, well, up here I have all of my molding planes that I don't use that often and when I need to use them, I've got to sharpen them. So how exactly do you go about doing that? Let's dive in. So most molding planes are usually hollows and rounds. Uh, they're the inside and outside profile and they fit together. You can make most any profile you need with a set of hollows and rounds. So this is one diameter and then you'd have another set that would be another diameter and you get a whole bunch of those and you can do whatever you want. And these are relatively easy. You can shape this one just like you would a scrub plane and this one just has a concave surface, which I'll be getting into that a little bit more. The concave surface is a little bit harder to sharpen, but not that much. And then we get into some more complex shapes. So these are very interesting because this one has, well, it has a hollow and a round and a step and a shoulder. And this one is a hollow and a round and this little step. So you're actually gonna have to sharpen different things on them. So how exactly do you go about sharpening that interesting profile, but still keeping it in the right shape? The first thing we wanna do with molding plane is we wanna flatten the back. And this one, you can see how it's nice and shiny. I've already flattened the back on that and it's ready to go. Right, once you have flattened the back once, it's not something you have to worry about. But a lot of times the older molding planes are gonna come like this. They're not all that pretty. It's not gonna take that much to come in, but most of the time it's gonna be spent flattening the back. And this particular one you can actually see is a welded surface. So there's a different piece of steel here than there is here. And you can kind of see the difference in color there. So we actually have to sharpen through all of this scale on the back here. And I'm gonna do that with my coarsest diamond stone. So let's take a look at that. Uh, I use a little bit of Windex on my diamond plates or actually some weird off-brand, whatever's the cheapest one I can get. And then you take it, set it flat on the back and start working on it. After a few passes, you can flip it over and see how it's looking. And that'll let you know how much work you actually have to put into this thing. In this case, it's actually looking pretty good. You can see it's touching up here around the edge and then over here. So that means I'm not gonna have to put too much in. I just need it to be shiny all the way around the edge where I'm cutting. So let's spend a little bit of time doing this. Okay, there you can see how it's shiny. I'm hitting all up in here and around in here. I'm not quite hitting here, which isn't a problem because this is not a cutting edge right over here. But I've gotten all the way around the edge. There's a little bit of pitting here and if I wanted to take some time, I could get rid of that. But that small amount of pitting is not going to be causing a problem on a molding iron, so there's no reason to really work into that. If you want to get picky about it, you can spend some more time and get rid of that, but I'm not going to worry about it. Next thing I want to do is take it onto the coarse, medium, and fine, since I've done the extra coarse to bring it down to this, and we'll get this nice and shiny. Okay, so I put the iron in there and you can see it's sticking up here and it's just barely sticking up here. So that's about where I want it. Shoot down just a little bit more. And it's pretty good here. But the problem is this valley is sticking up really, really high. I don't know if you can see that as well. So the previous owner had uh, sharpened the outside here well and sharpened here, but had not spent a whole lot of time working on this. And so now this is out of profile with the rest of the sole here. So I have two options. Number one, I can change the sole to match the iron, which is often the easier option. Or number two, I can change the iron to match the sole. So that's what we're gonna work on and showing you how do you actually go about adjusting the iron and sharpening it to match the sole. So for the outside edge here where you have a convex shape, it's fairly easy. You just set that on a plate and you grind it just like you would with a scrub plane or something of that nature or your carving gouges. It, it's it's you know, relatively straightforward. The big question that people have is this inside concave surface. And with how this has been done, you can tell that they sharpened the convex section quite a bit and they sharpened this point quite a bit, but they didn't sharpen this concave surface. The traditional way is to grab a slipstone and spend a while and just set it here and grind it down. Now with this, it takes a good while and this is something I should have soaked for a while to use it ahead of time. I don't use slipstones very often. They're relatively slow, they tend to break, um, and if you're grinding down a lot of material, it's a, it's a very slow and tedious process to get through all of that. 
The next option, one I probably use the most, is I take some sandpaper, something like this is about a 60 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna set that in there, I'm gonna hold it in place, and I'm going to grind it down into place with this sandpaper. I'm just gonna find a dowel that fits closely, it's usually something that's a little bit smaller than the size I want, and you can relatively quickly sharpen this up. And then I can just go through the grits, and then usually I go up to like four or 500 grit, and that's about all I really need to sharpen this. Um, but for grinding, this 60 grit is great. Now, if you really get picky about it, you can go up higher and higher grits. But in all honesty, for a molding plane, you don't have to go up that high. Something like a, a 400, 500 grit, maybe 600 is fantastic. And if you wanna go up to the thousands of grits, then great, but I don't really need to do that. So another option are these wave plates, and these are from DMT, and they have progressive waves so you work on convex and concave surfaces. They work just like your regular diamonds, but they're a little bit finer, so they're not going to cut quite as fast as the sandpaper. I can just set it on here and find the spot that's close to, and then sharpen on that. The nice thing about this is it allows me to get up to a finer and finer grit. If I'm just going to be sharpening, I'm not regrinding the profile, then I'm just going to go on this and spend a little bit of time on the medium and the fine and I'm ready to go. They also have an option of this handheld stick so you can put this in here and then sharpen this way. And so some people really like that. Um, personally, I really like these waves because you can go just about any profile you want, convex and concave, and they work really well. But for regrinding this to reshape it, I'm gonna be using sandpaper the most to get close. So now we've spent a bit of time adjusting the profile. We can go back and forth and check the profile, see if it's sticking up, see where we need to take off more, check it again. If you have a really hard scribing knife, you can actually put it in there and scribe the inside of the curvature so you know where to grind to. But I usually find it just faster to set it in here, pick it up, check it, pull it out, do it again, put it in here, check it. And it goes fairly quickly to go back and forth as you can just set it in there and then look down the profile and see how it is. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time regrinding this and then sharpening, and then we'll take this thing for a test ride and see how well this old bird works. As with any hand tool, sharpening is just bringing two planes of metal together until they touch and you get a sharp point. And so it's about grinding one side down to match the other one. And in this case, because there's only one bevel, you're just going to flatten one side and grind it down to match. And it's more or less how you actually do that grinding, just going through you know, sandpaper, diamonds, slip stones, whatever you want. And I will leave a link to these down below, so if you want to see that, um, you can find those. It's one of those things that it takes a little bit of skill and it's not something you're gonna do perfectly the first time. Oh well, um, it's not a huge issue. You can always resharpen them again and go a little further. If you get a molding plane where there is a large amount that it's out of line, it's a lot of times it's just not worth it to, to, to take the time and regrind it down into place because these are 
all over the place unless you're looking for that very specific profile. So that's about it. I would basically just suggest that you don't overthink the process. Just take a little bit off at a time and bring it in until it's a little closer. Most of the time molding plane irons are a little bit softer than other irons, uh, so they're fairly easy to sharpen and you can get through them pretty quickly. That means they're not going to stay as sharp as long, but you don't use a molding plane as long as you do others. Uh, most of the molding planes I have might get sharpened once every couple years because I just don't use it that much. My hollows and rounds, I might sharpen those a little more often because I do actually use those on occasion. But these complex shapes, um, I may end up using it once in the life of having a shop just because I don't need that complex shape that often. So you don't need to spend a whole lot of time sharpening it because you're not going to be using it that often. So don't worry about it too much. Have a little bit of fun, relax, and enjoy the process. And enjoy those really weird shavings you get out of molding planes. So I hope you like this video. If you have any thoughts, ideas, questions, I know there's a lot more out there. Let me know down below. I'd love to hear those. And if you do like, comment, share, subscribe, those really help out the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. <laughs> That's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. See, this is what happens when you have too much moisture in your shop. Your planes start to get moldy, and then you end up with these molding planes. <laughs>